Hi, my name is Larry Donahue. I'm a lawyer with Law for Small Business. Thanks for watching our video. Today we're going to talk about successor liability. And if you are somebody that's considering purchasing a business or maybe even partnering up with a business or merging, you're going to care about successor liability. Successor liability is a legal doctrine that attributes or attaches liability for debts, loans, liens, or obligations of an earlier company. You will find this in generally one of two ways, where um, a new company acquires or purchases the assets or the business of an earlier company, or where you may have a merger. Uh, another one is where you maybe have a partnership, where you're joining into a new business somehow, and you're concerned or worried about uh, the liens or loans or liabilities, debts of uh, the company that you're joining. The general rule for successor liability is there is no successor liability. Most people are presumed to be innocent third-party purchasers uh, purchasing something out of a store and they take it free and clear of any debts or liabilities or obligations. The exceptions to the rule are some of them you might think about. Imagine uh, buying somebody's car. Well, you can't just take the car if the car was financed previously. You would take the car subject to that financing. Same with a house. Um, you can't just take a house um, without dealing with the previous mortgage holder that would have a note or lien on the property. So one of the exceptions to the general rule are pre-existing liens. And uh, you can lien just about anything. You can lien uh, accounts receivable, contracts, intellectual property, company names, uh, just about anything. And so uh, that would represent one exception to the general rule. And if you acquire a previous company or merge with a previous company or partner with a previous company that has a pre-existing lien, the new enterprise takes subject to that pre-existing lien. Another exception to the general rule I told you about would be a previous agreement where you have a contract that specifies either expressly, meaning it's written down and says you agree to some previous liability, or it's implied where you didn't mention it and it's not mentioned anywhere. Um, the problem is for certain types of businesses, you will need affirmative language that says specifically you do not take subject to debts, liens, or uh, loans, or other obligations. So you need specific language that says you will not take the business or the asset subject to those previous obligations. Well, there's four general concepts around de facto merger, and you want, and if you have two or three of those present, you have trouble. One of them is continuation of the enterprise. What's that? It's where you, you may walk into a store and it says under new management. You have the same location, the same name, same employees. That would be considered a, a continuation of the enterprise. That would be one of four factors to look at for de facto merger. The second factor would be commonality of ownership. Um, even if by a little bit, if you merge and somebody that was owned 100% now owns 50%, they're going to bring over their debts and liabilities to the new enterprise. Uh, if you are in some sort of partnership um, or you buy the business outright, but you want to um, give them just a small piece of ownership, that could trigger it as well. So commonality of ownership is a problem for um, a possible exception to the successor liability general rule. Three, the selling company ceases to exist and dissolves after it sells its operations to the new company. That would be a problem. And the issue with that rule is, is it happens with most transactions. The um, old company sells its valuable assets and can no longer do business. So um, that's probably going to be a problem for you. 
And then the fourth one is assumption of seller's obligations. And remember what I told you about an agreement. If you don't have specific language disclaiming and specifically saying you're not taking subject to those, it can be imputed or assumed that you are. So those are the four possible issues to worry about. And if two or more are present, you're gonna have an issue. And let's go over those again. One, continu uh, the continuation of the enterprise. Two, commonality of ownership. Three, selling company ceases to operate, dissolves, closes. Four, the assumption of seller obligations. So we know at least you're gonna have one of the three. If you have any of the others, you're taking subject to previous obligations. Uh, there's two other exceptions I want you to know about, and that is, is uh, the mere continuity um, or continuation exception. And what that says here is one company remains with similar ownership. And so what you have is you have an old company and now you have the new company, old company goes away and you have the original owner or most of the original owners in that business. Finally, fraudulent transaction um, exception. What does that mean? It's what you think it means. It means you have somebody that owns a business and he or she forms a new business and he or she sells the assets of the old business to the new business. And it sort of feels like the others, but it's, it's more, um, you know, it's not arm's length transactions. It's not fair a market value in terms of what people are paying for that will be viewed as a fraudulent transaction. It can be undone pretty quickly by any debt or lien holder going after the new potential business. Now you know a little bit about what successor liability is in the exceptions, so how do you avoid it? So there's every deal, every transaction is different, uh, but let me give you some high level quick guidelines. Uh, the first one is hire a local, competent, experienced business lawyer. He or she is gonna be able to understand and look at the facts and circumstances of what's going on for you and give you some solid recommendations. And please, for the love of God, um, trust the lawyer and what he or she is telling you and take the emotions out. If um, my, you know, if some of my clients, I see them get emotional, I see them, you know, either fall in love with the business or the location, or they just trust that guy or gal selling the business, they're gonna get themselves in trouble. You know, keep it as unemotional as possible. And that's my, my second piece. Just pure business, spreadsheets, financials. Keep the emotion out of it. Don't trust your gut. Trust your instincts and trust the numbers. And that's all. Uh, also, conduct a lien search, a lien and title search. Uh, a lien search would be referencing anything at the state level. And basically, it's a UCC search on the name of the business and the name of the owners. And then what you want to do is a, a title uh, and record search at the county level for um, the business, wherever the business is located, and then the owners and wherever they're located. And what you're trying to do is make sure that nobody's pledged or hypothecated any aspect of the business or its assets. You want to make sure that um, you have um, the business owns its stuff outright and there's no tax liens or liabilities or other obligations. And remember, um, you, you could do a lien and title search on day one and then close in 90 days and somebody can throw a lien in there in between then and you're in trouble. So what you want to do is do another lien and title search literally the day of or the day before the closing if you can. Um, some other uh, suggestions is check in with the local taxing authority. Try and get a certificate of no tax due if available. Um, you want a really good purchase agreement, ideally an asset purchase agreement versus a share or um, a membership interest purchase agreement. But remember, successor liability, even if you have an asset purchase, you can still be potentially liable if two or three of those four factors are uh, hitting on you. Also consider escrow funds for any uh, outstanding liabilities. Don't let the seller promise you they'll take care of something. It needs to be taken care of prior to closing or during closing. And what does that mean? Well, let's say you spent hundred grand buying a business uh, and $20,000 is owed for old taxes. Well, that 20,000 
uh, better be paid to the taxing authority as part of the $100,000 you're given. And either your lawyer can help you with that or you can get a, you know, some sort of escrow company or title company involved to help you with a closing. Uh, finally, I got two more pieces of advice and that would be is uh, be cautious about permitting the seller to retain any level of ownership whatsoever. I mentioned that before. And if that's what they want, you really gotta look at things carefully and do a lot of research to make sure you're okay. And then, make sure the seller indemnifies you. And if there's any kind of seller financing or promissory notes, you wanna be able to cancel those debts and obligations to the seller if it turns out there was a liability the seller didn't disclose or wasn't able to resolve for you. Finally, don't be rushed. Don't follow your gut. Don't trust anybody. Just keep this you know, just focused on business and um, use your head, not your heart. So thank you for your time. Again, my name was Larry Donahue with Law for Small Business. And if you have any questions, please give us a call or contact us. Take care.